Croft Carp Algorithm, presented by Luke Stevens and Luke Story. Unfortunately, the other Luke, the Skywalker, couldn't be with us today, so it's just us two for now. The Hopcroft Carp Algorithm takes input as a bipartite, bipartite graph, here demonstrated by some Death Stars firing lasers. A bipartite graph is a graph whose vertices can be divided into two disjoint sets, U and V, such that every edge connects a vertex in U to one in V. It outputs a maximum cardinality matching, shown by the red lasers, which is a set of as many edges as possible, with the property that no two edges share a vertex. For our, for our example, we will split our bipartite graph into two sets, U and V. Before we even start on the first iteration, we initialize M, our matching set, to zero. However, you can start with a pre-existing matching, we just haven't. We then create trees for each unmatched vertex using breadth first search, starting with the first free vertex, 1 which matches to 2 and 4. We then continue, as such, until we reach our last free vertex, 11, which matches with 6. Having created this tree, we can now create an initial matching using depth first search, starting again with the first vertex, 1, which we remove with 2, along with any edges connected to them. Continuing along this, we end up with 2 and 12 having been orphaned, similar to Anakin Skywalker in episode 2. Spoiler alert! These vertices are then removed as we have no longer need for them in this initial matching. We continue until no vertices are left. This leaves us with our first matching, which we can demonstrate on the bipartite graph to the left using the red lines. Having created the first matching, we now need to improve it in the second iteration using an augmented path. This starts at each of the three vertices we have. In this case, we only have seven and follows sequential unmatched and matched paths like so until it reaches another free vertex, in this case 12. We can use the new pairs generated from this matching and the symmetric difference of them and our old matching to improve our matching M. As shown on the left, you can see the changes we make to the old matching to create the final cardinality matching to be outputted by the algorithm. As you can see, there is no need for a third iteration as there are no free vertexes and all vertexes in U are connected to vertices in V and vice versa. This algorithm is complete and produces a maximum matching, a perfect matching. However, not all bipartite graphs will produce such a perfect matching and some may need much more than two iterations. And now let's have a look at the time complexity of the Hopcroft graph algorithm. First of all, we're going to look at how much time each iteration takes. Because each iteration is effectively a breadth first search followed by a depth first search, we, and each of these have orders relating to the number of edges in the graph, each iteration in total has order E, E standing for the number of edges. So now, how many of these iterations are going to happen? It can be shown that in the worst case scenario, the most number of iterations that will ever happen is two times the square root of the number of vertices in the graph. So we put these two bits of information together, and in the worst case, the time complexity of the hopcroft karp algorithm is the is big O, then the number of edges times by the square root of the number of vertices, which is pretty powerful.